Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an American comedy fantasy film called Click. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie starts as we see the main protagonist, Michael Newman, who is an architect by profession. He lives with his family of four, which includes his wife, Donna, and their two children, Ben and Samantha. Michael's heavy-handed boss, John Ammer, makes him work more than necessary, and as a result, Michael often ends up ignoring his family. Despite all this, Michael finds a lot of joy out of the little time he gets to spend with his children, like when he watches Dragon Tales with them before leaving for work. One day at work, John offers Michael a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to design a luxury hotel for a Japanese conglomerate. He also promises Michael he will make him partner if he is able to seal the contract. Michael is elated by the proposition, but realizes that he has to go camping with his family. Later, he also misses Ben's swimming race. When Michael reaches the pool, he is greeted by Ben's swimming teacher, Bill, with whom Ben seems to have a great friendship. He instantly becomes jealous, as he isn't able to spend much time with his son. Hence, he makes fun of Bill's red speedo. As the family gathers at the 4th of July fireworks, Michael spends all of his time on the phone with his boss, which begins to annoy Michael's mother, Trudy. She complains that Michael will die early if he continues to overwork himself and eat junk food. As Michael is occupied on the phone, his father Ted entertains the kids with his quarter trick. Fascinated by the trick, Ben and Samantha ask their grandfather how he managed to make the coin reappear, but Ted responds that a magician never reveals his secrets. Ted further adds that even the big boy, Michael, hasn't been able to decode his secret. Later, at home, Kate Beckinsale comes downstairs wearing a Pocahontas costume that awakened adulthood in an entire generation of young teenagers. An argument erupts when Michael tells Donna to postpone the camping trip. He eventually calms her down and starts his project research by watching an Asian architecture documentary. However, he hurts himself when he accidentally mistakes Ben's helicopter remote for the TV remote. Tired of always mixing up the remotes, Michael heads out to the supermarket to buy a universal remote control. Michael enters the retail store, Bed Bath & Beyond. He looks everywhere for the remote, but doesn't find one. A tired Michael then collapses on a bed. When he turns around, he spots a section of the store called Beyond. When he gets inside to inspect, he is welcomed by a mysterious man named Morty. Michael begins to explain his situation to Morty, who then takes Michael to a large warehouse called Way Beyond. Morty then grabs a weird-looking remote and offers it to Michael for free. Morty tells Michael that the remote will program itself when he points and clicks the buttons. A confused Michael inquires why he is being given the remote for free. What's the catch? To which Morty responds that good guys need a break every once in a while. As Michael prepares to leave, he is also told that the item is non-refundable. After Michael reaches home, he continues watching the documentary and begins working on the project design. However, he is soon disturbed by his dog, Sundance. The poor dog wants a break outside, so he continues to bark. A furious Michael then points the remote at Sundance and presses the volume down button repeatedly while shouting at the dog to remain silent for five minutes. Astonishingly, the dog becomes mute, but Michael dismisses it as he thinks he drank too much cough syrup and ate too many Twinkies and is experiencing a hallucination. After Michael takes Sundance out, he starts getting frustrated again as the dog takes really long to find a spot to relieve himself. So he just points the remote at the dog again while pressing fast forward. Just like the last time, the trick works as the remote fast tracks Sundance, who quickly finishes his work and gets back inside. Michael is astonished and finally believes in the power of the universal remote. He finds out that the remote can be used to control real life. The following day, Michael uses the remote to look into his past life. He gets emotional when he sees his little self play football with his friends at Lake Winnipesaukee. Meanwhile, Morty gives Michael his phone number in case he has any questions about the remote. Michael uses the remote to fast forward through family dinner, arguments, and even intercourse. After fast forwarding the intercourse, Michael is surprised to learn that he climaxed very quickly and couldn't pleasure Donna like he normally used to. He also learns that he doesn't remember the conversations he had or commitments he made during the dinner. Michael calls Morty and demands an explanation for it. Morty says that during fast forward, his body is on autopilot. This means that he is going through the motions of everyday life, but his mind skips ahead. 
In this way, while Michael seems to live a normal life, he doesn't remember any of it. After this revelation, Michael uses the remote to fast forward through undesirable things, like sickness, cold showers, and traffic. He also presents the design he made, on autopilot mode, to the Japanese businessman Mr. Watsuhita. The meeting seems to be going great, but Michael's overexcited boss, John, unintentionally mocks Japan's iconic baseball players, mistaking their name for Asian dishes. This prompts Mr. Watsuhita to excuse himself and have a private conversation with his team. A nervous Michael tries to overhear Watsuhita's conversation, but can't understand any of it. So, he uses the remote to translate their conversation into English and turn up their volume. The trick works, and it reveals that the Japanese team disliked Michael's design, commenting that it must have been made after watching a bad documentary on Asian architecture. They wanted more rooms to maximize their profits, and not a stupid river in the lobby. Mr. Watsuhita then orders his team to end the meeting, so they can go have jello shots at America's greatest cultural achievement, TGI Fridays. However, when Mr. Watsuhita approaches Michael to wrap up, Michael uses the overheard conversation to win over the businessman. He rips up his own failed design, and offers to make a new one to incorporate more rooms to maximize profits. He also suggests they blow this joint and go to TGI Fridays for jello shots. A delighted Mr. Watsuhita finally grants the contract to Michael's company. Later, at home, a super elated Michael buys gifts for his wife and children. When Donna inquires about the reason for Michael's joy, he reveals that John has promoted him to a partnership. Donna jumps in excitement. However, the excitement turns into disappointment the next day, when Michael learns that he hasn't been promoted. As a matter of fact, he won't be promoted until he prepares the construction plan for the hotel and gets Mr. Watsuhita's commitment, which will take at least several months. Devastated by the news, Michael uses the remote to pause John and fart in his mouth. Huh. <laughs> Classic Adam Sandler. In the next scene, Michael plans on using the remote to fast forward to the time when he finishes the Watsuhita project. When he seeks Morty's advice, Morty reminds Michael about the leprechaun from a serial advertisement. The leprechaun always chases a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but when he finally gets there, he realizes it is just cornflakes. Michael doesn't understand the metaphor, but nevertheless suspends his plans to use the remote. At home, Michael is still frustrated over his promotion and takes it out on his children. The kids start crying when Michael makes fun of their plans to build houses out of pizza and pickles. He then has an argument with Donna. Later, Michael realizes his mistake. He is annoyed by his actions, so he decides to use the remote again to skip ahead to his promotion, and he finds himself at his promotion party. He finds out that it took John a whole year to promote him. During this time, Donna and Michael's relations started to get strained, and they apparently entered marriage counseling. Ben and Samantha have matured and no longer watch the Dragon Tales cartoon. Now they watch CSI. He also learns that Sundance has passed away. Michael breaks down and regrets not letting his late dog hump his leg. This confuses Donna, but she consoles him anyway. Michael promises Donna that he will change and become a better man for her. He pleads with her not to leave him. Michael and Donna make out, but the remote automatically fast forwards to the end of the intercourse. Michael again finds an unsatisfied Donna lying next to him on the bed. He is puzzled by the remote automatically skipping time without him pressing any buttons. He then contacts Morty, who reveals that the remote is now using its memory to execute Michael's preferences. Just like Google, but way ahead of its time. Michael fast-forwarded through an entire year, and that accounted for a lot of intercourse skipped. Now, each time he tries having intercourse, or is involved in events like showering, driving through traffic, arguing, and being sick, the remote is going to fast-forward on its own. Hearing this, Michael regrets having ever used the remote and returns the remote to Morty, but it automatically reappears in his hand. He then makes several attempts to discard and destroy the remote, but it reappears each time. The next day, Michael goes to the office on a bicycle without showering so that he can avoid the time being automatically fast-forwarded. There, John tells him about his plans to retire and travel to Morocco. John's retirement would make Michael the new head of the international division at the firm. While Michael is stunned by his promotion to such a high post, John exclaims that every account Michael has worked on has turned to gold. John also comments that he wouldn't be surprised if one day Michael ended up being their company's CEO. Suddenly, Michael is fast-forwarded 10 years into the future, where he has become the CEO and is very wealthy, but also morbidly obese. 
He quickly returns home to find that Ben and Samantha are grown up teenagers. Ben has become an obese guy, much like himself, while Samantha has started dating someone. He also learns that Donna has divorced him and is dating Ben's swimming teacher, Bill. Enraged by their relationship, Michael attacks Bill. An argument ensues and the family dog jumps on Michael, causing him to knock his head on the wall and fall unconscious. After six long years, Michael finally regains consciousness. Donna is there by his side, who reveals that after he went into a coma, a CAT scan found cancer in his body, so he had to undergo treatment for years. After beating cancer, he had a heart attack too. However, Michael is no longer fat as a result of having undergone liposuction in order to save his life. Later, at the firm, Michael meets an adult, Ben, who has surprisingly lost a lot of weight working out with Donna's husband, Bill. Michael offers to take Ben, Samantha, and their grandparents out for an ice cream, but Ben reveals that Grandpa Ted has already died. This devastates Michael, who breaks into tears and visits Ted's grave. Michael then uses the remote to re-experience the time when he last saw his dad. He sees that Ted dropped by his office and offered to take Ben and him out for dinner, but an autopilot Michael rejected the offer without even looking at the old man. Ted continued to insist and offered to show Michael his favorite childhood quarter trick, but an agitated Michael yelled at his father while revealing that he had always known the secret to the trick. The poor old man then apologizes and leaves with tears in his eyes. Michael is filled with shame and guilt. Morty then appears and apologizes for taking his father away, admitting that he is the angel of death. The revelation makes Michael angry and he attacks Morty. However, Morty disappears into thin air and reappears behind him. Frightened, Michael asks the remote to take him to a good place, whereupon the remote fast forwards him several more years into the future to Ben's wedding. At the wedding, Michael is elated to see his mother and gives her a long kiss. He also meets an all grown up Samantha. Donna offers to dance with Michael when their old song comes on and things cheer up a little, but then Michael hears Samantha call Bill dad and suffers from a heart attack, unable to bear the pain of being replaced, even as a father. He wakes up in the hospital that night with Ben and Samantha by his side. Before Ben and Samantha are escorted out by the nurse, Michael finds out that Ben is skipping his honeymoon because of a business deal. Fearing that Ben might make the same mistakes he did, Michael gathers the last of his strength to follow them out of the hospital. However, his body gives out and he collapses onto the ground with his family all around him. In a very low voice, he suggests Ben always put family first and apologizes to Samantha for not being there for her. Michael then tells Donna that he will always love her and passes away. Suddenly, Michael reawakens in Bed Bath & Beyond. He is overcome with joy when he learns that everything was just a dream. Outside, he is amazed to see his crappy, mediocre, middle-class car. After he reaches home, he embraces his family and promises to spend more time with them. Just then, he finds the remote on the counter, along with a note from Morty, which says that he has been given a second chance, as good guys need a break. Morty also hopes that Michael will do the right thing this time. The movie ends as Michael throws the remote in the trash and is delighted as this time it does not reappear. Despite being wrapped in a dated package of Adam Sandler's trademark toilet humor and jokes that would get writers cancelled these days, Click is a film with a beautiful message. It reminds us that the most important moments in life lie in between the moments we all feel that we're waiting for, that the little things count, family comes first, and the best things in life are free. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.